Hi, I'm Maria Theha of Solvella Sales on social media. Welcome back to Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. A big shout out to the podcast's Patreon supporters. I'd love it if you could join them in supporting this podcast each month so that I can continue to provide it to you for free. Welcome to today's podcast. It's behind the scenes of our podcasting lives. Check Your Thread podcast is produced by Zoe Edwards. And of course, mine is So Organized Style Podcast. I'll let you decide how much you gain from listening to our podcast processes and how we fit podcasting into our everyday lives if you're a budding podcaster. Thanks for coming back to this episode on So Organized Style Podcast. Let's get started. We start our first question with what episode are you most proud of with your podcast? And I go first. But then we continue with our 20 questions process. Which previous episode from your feed do you feel most proud of or is the most representative of your podcast? Marcia Lois Riddington. We always refer to her as Marcia Lois Riddington. She's a lovely lady. She's from the UK. She shows using Japanese style. She's been on the podcast twice. So she came on when I first started interviewing people in Cyber 50. I think it must have been 2020. And I love the way she speaks. She's so gentle. And I had her on last year because on Cyber 50, they did some research about visibility of older sewers. And I love the way she still talks about how the visibility still needs to be met and the way she speaks is is very measured but spot on. She really represents the sort of people that are on the podcast. You know, she just goes about her life. She sews for herself. She's a lovely lady. Fantastic. So that episode, is that the one that you're most proud of and you feel is most representative of your podcast? Well, it's two. So she was on at the start and she's been on since and it represents the type of person who I have on the podcast and it's giving her a platform and giving others on the platform to talk about what it means to them, what it means to their community. Being overlooked doesn't really do anything for the businesses that they may be going to for patents or fabrics. So they're going to go elsewhere and that's what they do. I will put those links in the show notes for my version of this conversation. I probably would would be most proud of the guest episodes that I have where we've managed, okay, maybe one of the episodes with Shams because I felt we went in directions that I wasn't expecting and I felt emboldened enough to go and do that because I always outline kind of the topics I want to talk about with the person and, and I try to be open and to see where it goes conversation that I've felt free enough to go in different directions and basically not just rip up my notes but that kind of thing that's been good the solo episodes I was very proud of and it's one that I I want to do more of so I hope it'll be more representative going forward but my seasonal stash organization episode which was 119 basically it was an idea that I had of how I could rework my stash in a way that really allowed me to get the most from it, see what I had and not get overwhelmed. Like get excited to use it, not get overwhelmed by it um, and really make the most of it and create a sense of movement in the stashes. And so I had that idea, I had that idea quite a while ago and then eventually I kind of whipped it up into an episode and I created a free handout as well for that. So I created a free handout as well to, to make that more accessible for some people. And then the feedback was really good from it. And lots of people have implemented that organization system for their stash and have really been talking about how it's been benefiting them. So coming up with an idea, finding a way to share that idea and then know that that idea has helped people was so gratifying. And I'm really happy about that, you know, because it's actually physically manifested in a way that people can make the most of what already exists. So that's ultimately what I'm trying to do. So I was very proud of that. And I was also quite proud of one that I did that (laughs) was a response to a slightly narky email I got. And that's the Sewing is Political episode. And that was 107. And that was very much one where I was taking the biggest, broadest look at what's going on, you know, like why this matters, why we're having these conversations, you know. The person was knocked off that I was bringing in kind of some political discussion into what they felt should be strictly about sewing. And I was like, no 
No, my friend. Sewing is political. Everything is political. Let me break it down why that is. And, and that was the resultant episode <laughs> that came out of it. So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like you need to do it sometimes. You need to be like, why are we even doing this? Let me tell you. Let me remind you, <laughs> you know. Has anything ever gone wrong whilst you were making your podcast? A couple of things that have gone wrong are is not hitting the record button. <gasps> we have a yes. conversation. <laughs> You only ever do that once. True, true. You only ever do that once. That's so true. That, that was really bad. Oh, bless. That's got to have happened to everyone. Yeah. I didn't hit record, but I realised about 20 minutes in, and uh, that was with the very lovely Rebecca Evans Merritt. And I was like, I, I just was completely like, I'm so sorry. And she very, very graciously started again. <laughs> And so yep. you probably wouldn't know from the outside. But yeah, it was like, it was heart stopping. So you're like, oh God, oh bless you. What else has gone wrong? Not turning notifications on. I've had direct messages saying, da da da, did I get the right day and time? And then sometimes what's happened is the person turns up a day early because the time difference. So sure, four times a year. Four times a year, daylight savings changes, not at the same time for Northern Southern Hemisphere. There was one meeting that I missed and it was only by about five minutes and I got on. But four times a year, I go on to World Time Buddy and it does do the change and I put it in there and for some reason, I've got to be double sure that week. So usually that's really what goes wrong with the podcast, <laughs> the timing. What about you? I use time converter, but yeah, but I'm always the same. I'm like very careful to put the exact date in because yeah, there is those bits, wasn't there? Yeah, so there was the bit where I didn't press record, but that was kind of okay. I missed turning up for an, a recording once and it was with the very lovely frequent guest that I have, Shanz Eldin Rogers. I was not feeling well and I'd gone for a bit of a nap <laughs> beforehand to kind of get myself, you know, better you know, in a better headspace for our conversation. And the, I missed the start. And she was so sweet. She messaged me like, are you okay? And I was just so apologetic because I think that's so unprofessional. And that's not how I like to do things. But thankfully, it wasn't the first time that we'd recorded. So I had a precedent of being a <laughs> halfway professional individual in advance. But I think if that had been our first conversation, she would have been like, oh no, <laughs> this person's a mess, <laughs> a chaotic, chaotic mess. But thankfully, yeah, but she was very, very lovely about it. I record the conversations, I record the introductions, I edit both of them and I then leave them for my producer husband to put them together as an episode and then upload them. And I know that there's some things have gone wrong <laughs> his end a couple of times, but I don't really understand and I know it got sorted out at the end, so <laughs> I don't really know what went on there. <laughs> So when people ask you what you do, how quickly, if at all, do you bring your podcast into conversation? You know how when you talk to someone who doesn't sew and you start saying that you sew and their eyes glaze over? I have to gauge the interest of that person in the conversation leading up to the question, Marie, what do you do? Before I tell them or not tell them. In a conversation, unless they are part of a communication role or they've done something in that area I don't bring it up and you I'm trying to say it quicker sorry I was ostensibly at home with my kids for about eight years I kind of almost feel like I'm restarting my career you know I've often responded again oh I work for a sewing company or I also do some teaching occasionally or I used to do a lot more so I'm like oh I'm a, I'm a sewing teacher I actually spend more time making the podcast you know that's the majority of my income now as well so why am I not feeling confident enough to say oh I'm a podcaster so I'm trying to flip it that it's like no I'm a podcaster and but the same like I don't lead with that I'm, I'm not quick to tell people like I only tell people if they are genuinely interested like just make sure though that you tell people that you're an independent podcaster there we go yeah we're not even on a network we don't need a network we don't need a network we're our own network what is the goal or mission of your podcast? So it's raising the visibility of what sewers want from the industry, what they want for themselves, raising the visibility of older sewers. I'm raising the idea that sewers are the buyers and we're letting businesses know what we want, not what we're being given. So that's being a little bit political. 
and I want to make sure that people understand that our hobbies can add to landfill if we're not mindful about what we're purchasing and what we're using, what resources we're using and how much we create. So I think that's why we're both kind of on the same wavelength. Absolutely. But you've also got a big community aspect to your podcast as well, haven't Very you? Very much so. I mean, to the point of, you know, people who are sewing for overseas communities, sewing for young girls so that they can go to school and not be disadvantaged because they can't afford to buy period pads. They have reusable ones. They've got Days for Girls. They do that sewing and that's international. And then there are the others who are creating patterns for women who are living with the long-term effects of breast cancer or any sort of cancer. What are the goals or missions of your podcast? I call it my manifesto. The overall vision of my manifesto. I want a world where the impact on the environment is factored into every decision, including sewing, from what resources we're buying to how we choose to use it or not. I think at this point, the climate crisis, that we have to make the climate and the impact on the environment fundamental in every decision. I don't think we have a choice at this point. And then my mission, how I do that basically, is I help people to make more sustainable choices by giving them information, ideas, inspiration and agency. And I feel that by starting to sew more sustainably, it's then possible to do lots of other things more sustainably that these ideas and approaches can spread out into many areas of life. And to spread the idea that living more sustainably can be fun and fulfilling, and not just about like hand wringing and eco snobbery or feeling deprived. And also I feel that Check Your Thread reflects the values of a wider community of people having ideas and interesting conversations and making things happen. Our Check Your Thread sub-community feels positive, supportive and fun. That's my mission. Actually, my manifesto is broken into sections. So there's the vision. You can, you can make your own by listening to episode 71. Doing that work, it's really helped me. And not just making the podcast, but really making decisions in all sorts of aspects of my life, really. Like, what am I doing? Have any of your guests surprised you in some way? They all surprise me. And what I love about each of them, if they have a particular love of a technique or a skill... I love seeing what they do to develop that afterwards. So they might come on and they'll talk about it. I follow those people, of course. But then afterwards, I'm actually not surprised when they end up taking that further and spreading that joy to other people, either through teaching or developing resources that others can use. Um, I've had some people who, when they've come on, I thought I knew what they were going to talk about and then it changed. It's like, yeah, okay. No worries. That was um, Denise, who lives in Portland, and we were supposed to be talking about sewing uh, for living with breast cancer, all the, the outcomes of it. And she just went ahead and said, well, I'm going to tell you what it's like. And she said, are you ready? And I said, okay. And she told me everything physical that happened. And that was not about sewing, but that's the body that she lives in. And so she's got to be mindful that whatever she sews does not feel uncomfortable that sort of thing can happen that's that's really powerful like hers i had a warning at the start and when i published it i made sure that it, you know it wasn't for children you and i have the the responsibility to make sure that when you have podcasts like that you have to make sure that there is a warning for listeners because it's on us it's our responsibility not the person that we're interviewing so i've had a couple like that yeah, I, I think I've only ever had to do a warning where there was a, a couple of swearsies got dropped <laughs> in one episode. We do have that responsibility. And also, I, as a parent who knows how difficult it can be to kind of fit in your podcast listening with your life, you want to make it so that somebody can finish up a podcast episode whilst their kid's in the back of the car or, <laughs> you know, whilst they're preparing dinner in the other room and somebody walks in or something, don't you? You want to make it so that it, it can be enjoyed in as many arenas of people's lives as possible, I feel. I was most surprised by when I um, interviewed Bogita Helmerson and she had an Australian accent. <laughs> oh, okay. I get nervous before speaking to everybody because I think that when you start talking to somebody, you want to get them feeling as comfortable as possible. But there's a lot of pressure 
in that first few minutes to create a nice relaxing atmosphere that people feel jovial and comfortable and happy and because they're probably a little bit nervous as well so I feel there's quite a lot of pressure on those first few minutes so I always feel nervous to begin with whilst I was waiting for Bagita to join the session I was doing some breathing with the app that we're using when somebody joins there's always a sound that you get but for some reason that sound didn't go off when she joined so there's me doing my breathing with my eyes closed and I open my eyes and she's there so she was just kind of chuckling I think because I was obviously looking ridiculous and wasn't aware that she'd arrived and then she starts talking with her Australian accent because you know she lives in Sweden and her name's Birgitta Helmsen and I was like it was just not what I was expecting and because it's not that much information about her past or whatever on the website. So I'd done as much research as I could, but there wasn't that much to learn in advance. So, yeah. So I was just, I was very kind of like, oh. <laughs> you know, quite kind of a bit shocked. And I had to kind of pull myself together quite quickly <laughs> to carry so, on. How organized are you with your podcast making process? Now I record and edit during the week. So I have a two-month plan of recordings and so I know when things are going out. I try and record six weeks ahead of schedule, but when I first started, there was no way I was organised. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. So am I organised? I am now. That's so funny, but making the podcast has made you organised. Well, actually talking to you made me more organised during the week. Really? The fact that I could have that influence? So, so. I think I've already let people know how organised you are with the podcast. I don't feel organised at all. I feel like a chaotic mess, but I bring it together when it counts. I have my systems in place, but I see I'm a very analogue person. I literally have paper notebook. I've got a paper calendar. But it kind of works for me and I've got my systems of where I make my notes and how I, you know, communicate with people. But, you know, you, you develop it over time. But I think because of having the pressure of having to work within the hours of school drop off and school pick up. And then I do end up doing some stuff in the evenings and I do sometimes end up doing some stuff at the weekends. But I try to keep that to a minimum. I think just having that clear parameter of time where I have to get things done I can't waft about I have to kind of get it done enforced organization really <laughs> um so what part of the podcast making process do you enjoy the most the face-to-face -face chat but always when they finally come on and we have a chat and I love that do you get nervous before I would say no the nervousness comes when they first come on and you say hi and then I don't know what to do next to actually get to the question so I've actually got a couple of stock standard sentences that get me there. The nerves now are if I haven't prepped. So I make sure that I prep. And if I don't prep for that particular one, I'll have prep from others that I can use. So it's the chatting that I enjoy the most. Sometimes when people are nervous, they continue to talk and they don't really take a breath and they just keep talking. And you want to ask a follow-up question of something that they've said. It kind of sounds like that, right? I'll actually write notes. That if I mention something, I think, oh, that'd be interesting. I let them talk because they are nervous and then we'll, I'll follow that up and they'll say, so earlier on you said da-da-da. Can you expand on that because that sounded really interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're really good at that. Thanks. I probably only do that once and that helps them think, oh, she was actually listening. It's like, yeah, I was listening because you're actually interesting. So don't worry about your nerves. And then most of the time I take the white space out so so that you can hear the various parts of what they're saying. And I try and make sure that if there was something that they said which was important, that I make sure that listeners can hear that piece. I actually talk quite a lot during the podcast conversation, but I edit myself out quite a lot. What part of the podcast making process do you enjoy the least? The time it takes to edit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love editing. Do you? So it takes me one hour of editing for every 10 minutes because I hand edit what you hear. Everyone needs to know that, people. It can take an hour for every 10 minutes that you hear. <laughs> and the people who know the effect of that are our guests. The most common comment I get back is, I didn't know I sounded that good and then they laughed because I know it was the work that I put into it to make sure that 
they sounded that good. I'm going, oh, that was just you, you know that. It's creating a balance. I mean, I try and remove a lot of repetition. Yeah, I do enjoy the editing. You're kind of always crafting the conversation to a certain extent. And it's useful as well because often I'm writing my show notes at the same time and I'm listening back during the edit to really extract the overview of what was actually going on there in that conversation, you know, when people have gone in an interesting way or when something kind of transpired in a way that you hadn't predicted. That can almost give the episode its flavour and I don't like the way that it takes so long and you're just sitting there with headphones on. I think it's a really important process and, and it can be enjoyable and it can feel quite satisfying when you've done a good job, I think. Alrighty, so... How has podcast making affected your sewing life? I juggle my weekdays to sew. So I still have to sew because that's what keeps me going. Now, because of the people that I've spoken to and the sort of topics that that those people have touched on, I'm a lot more mindful of how I source my fabrics and notions. So it's the podcast conversations that have affected my sewing. Yeah, that's that's informed my own sewing a lot. Like recently, I've just made a draft excluder for a friend and a yoga bolster for another friend, both stuffed with scraps, directly influenced by the <laughs> the podcast episode I was making about scrap strategies where people were submitting their own ideas. And I was like, that's such a good idea. So yeah, it can be really literal. Like it literally did just affect my <laughs> thing. Trying to keep the podcast to two kind of working hours allows for time to sew. Do you have any dream guests that you'd love to interview? No, I don't. Really? That's the honest truth. I don't have a dream guest. Oh, yeah, you've you've got a lot of episodes under your belt. (laughs) As I say, I have an enormous list of people that I would love to speak to. Okay, so I would love to speak to Zero Waste Daniel. He's a designer based in New York who creates incredible clothing using scraps that he gets from the garment district and he's amazing and his work is incredible and I would love to speak to him. I will contact him though one day, I will. The stars need to align in certain ways. (laughs) If you were forced to start another podcast on a different topic, what would it be about and how would it be different? So I couldn't figure out what the topic was that I would do another podcast for. Not about cycling or anything like that? So I, I couldn't really come up with a different topic and I don't know that I would do it as an interview. If you were to start a new, a new podcast, how would you yeah, approach making it differently to your current one? I would do it as a series, a six-part series. Right. So I, I don't know what the topic would be, but I'd want to do it with other people. Interesting. So it could be on the cards. You could make, if the, the right topic had presented itself and the right group of people came together, you, you would be open to making another podcast at some yep. point. No matter how many hurdles we have to get through, we'll get it done. And your take on it? If I was forced to start another podcast on a different topic, it would probably be something about self-sufficiency and small space growing of food. I'm really into that, but I'm not very knowledgeable. So I think it would be great to kind of come at it as a bit of a beginner and talk to lots of interesting people and explore the ideas of is it possible to be self-sufficient in a small growing space? It'd be fun to maybe, if not a team, then work with one other person just to share ideas, but also share some of the workload as well. Well, it's something obviously I've touched on a little bit in Check Your Thread because I'm kind of thinking like, well, if I'm interested in sewing more sustainably, because I think the thing is there's so many parallels between food and clothing. Like it's something that we have to engage in every single day. It's something that affects everybody. Yeah, there's so many kind of ethical and environmental and waste issues in both of them that I think that if I'm interested in one and the other, there's probably other people that are interested in both as well. So that's why I have gone down that a little bit. I've had mixed feedback when I've done episodes on things that are entirely separate from sewing, although I've always tried to kind of link them to sewing a little bit. But yeah, so there we go. Thank you so much for answering all these questions with me. Thank you for answering them and for coming up with who's going to do what. That was really good of you. Thank you. Any last words? I think our listeners are going to love session as much as we've loved it because they know what we're all about and we're happy to make sure that they get podcasts to listen to every week. I love it. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. This episode of Sub50 Podcast on Soul Gunnar Style was produced by me, Maria Theoharis, with permission of Zoe Edwards, sound by beansound.com. 
Many thanks for the ongoing support of the podcast Patreon contributors. Their ongoing support allows me to develop this podcast free. You can subscribe to Soul Be Nice Style Podcast, but with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free Sober 50 podcast archive on Soul Be Nice Style Podcast. We'll look forward to joining you in your sign room next time. Stay safe, everyone.